What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out WWE moments that got no reaction. Now, it's okay if a wrestler gets a negative reaction, you know, especially if they're trying to be a heel. You can work with that. You can you can build something that with that. Even if they're a baby face, originally booked as a baby face, but they're getting booze, you can work with that. You can spin that into something great. You can actually feed into the negative reaction. And then you have situations where sometimes a wrestler gets the right reaction, a positive reaction, a reaction of endearment and support. But the worst thing as a wrestler is to get no reaction. When they're sitting there just looking at you with no type of yays, no type of boos, just quiet, that's the worst thing to get as a wrestler. I'd rather get booed out the building because I can turn that into a, an angle. I can change my character off of that than to get nothing. No reaction is the worst reaction. So we're going to check out some of these moments where fans just didn't give a damn. Whatever happened, whatever segment, whatever promo, they just get this off my screen. I don't care. We're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Should be a good one, man. With the exception of death and injuries, the worst thing that can happen to a wrestler is getting no reaction from the audience. Like I just said. It can happen to anyone. <laughs> Even wrestlers like Edge, Kane, and The Undertaker have had incidents where they killed the crowd. In fact, one moment was so bad that WWE actually stopped the show and told fans they had to get louder. Before I show you that, this first oh, moment definitely gotta is check pretty this out. sad. At Survivor Series 2014, it was Team John Cena versus The Authority. Cena's team uh -huh. was stacked with The Big Show, Dolph Ziggler, Ryback, and Eric Rowan. And all of them got a big reaction, except for one. Look at that. Listen to Dolphs. And then there was Eric Rowan. Oh, man. Oh, man. They didn't even pipe in cheers or nothing. Damn, I forgot about this. But you, you heard Dolph had the biggest reaction damn near, so. The reason the fans had no reaction for poor Rowan was that this is the first time he used that particular entrance music. Also, mm. fans just simply weren't into the character. A moment yeah. like that is bad, but imagine getting no reaction every time you come out. That's what happened to this next wrestler. Charlie Haas debuted in a big way by being paired with Kurt Angle mm -hmm. and Shelton Benjamin. Shelton and Haas <clears throat> would go on to become two-time WWE Tag Team Champions, but things went downhill after they broke up. Haas was used less and less and eventually got released in 2005. However, in 2005, Six, Charlie Haas came back, and the response was, well, non existent. Charlie Haas! Unfortunately, it wasn't just a case of a bad crowd. This would keep happening at shows, and fans would eventually start uh, referring to it as the Haas Pop. Y'all are cold, bro. Wrestling fans can be some of the cruelest individuals. Not the Haas Pop. You don't want the hoss pop, cause there is no pop. It's just quiet. Oh. Two hundred and forty-nine pounds, Charlie Haas. Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler here at Penn State University. And King last week, Charlie Haas was in. Bro, you hear the the music, but you hear absolutely nothing other than the commentators commentating. Inadvertently involved in a This was bad, but wait until you see the moment when WWE stopped a show because of how dead the crowd was. In 2010, Edge made his return at the Royal Rumble and it was immediately a face, a good guy. Mm -hmm. However, about three months later, Edge got drafted from SmackDown to Raw. The Radar Superstar made one final appearance on the Blue Brand to tell the fans how much they meant to him. Christian interrupted though and claimed that Edge's heartfelt speech was a load of crap. Edge admitted that Captain Charisma was right, but the crowd didn't seem to care. I can't wait to get off this show. For the last few months, I've been the puppeteer and these people have been my puppets. I've been making them dance around saying spear, 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 anytime I wanted them to. And guess what? They did it. The lackluster. Oh. Ha. Uh... <laughs> 
And then some sometimes fans they can they can be the problem too at these shows. Like, why are you there if you're just there to be bored? Be bored at home. Ah. Uh. Their fan response was due to a combination of fans still liking Edge, especially since he had just come back from a major injury, yeah. and also just the whole heel turn not being that great. It's uh -huh. not surprising that WWE made Edge face again shortly after this. Yep. Mick Foley is one of the most beloved Makes wrestlers sense. of all time. Not only was he willing to risk his life to entertain the fans, but he's also one of the nicest guys in the world. For sure. So how could fans not react to him? Oh, trust me, there's a way. In 2006, Foley began a feud with Edge, leading to their famous WrestleMania match where Mick went through a flaming table. Jesus, oh God, bro. Classic. Oh After WrestleMania, Mick and the Radar Superstar continued their rivalry. During an episode of Raw, Edge and Mick Foley went at it again. However, Foley invited Tommy Dreamer and made it a triple threat match. It looked like the two ECW legends were going to work together until Mick Foley betrayed Tommy and revealed he was now working with Edge. Mm -hmm. The crowd barely reacted, and yep. after the heel turn was over, they stood in silence. Now look at this, no. Yeah, that, there was no boo. It was just like... Okay. <laughs> The fans clearly did not want to boo Mick Foley, yeah. and how could they? This was the man who nearly killed himself to give us one of the greatest moments in WWE history. Facts. It's not surprising that Mick Foley's run as a bad guy was short-lived and is rarely brought up. In yeah. 2006, Kane <laughs> was suffering from identity fraud when someone wore his old mask and started attacking mm -hmm. him. The real Kane and the imposter Kane finally got to fight it out at the Vengeance pay-per-view. While both men brought the heat, the crowd was lukewarm at best. <laughs> Imposter King. Imposter King. Ironically, bro. something very similar happened to The Undertaker, too, and it was even worse. In the mid 90s, The Undertaker disappeared from WWE after he was defeated by Yokozuna at the Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. A few months later, the dead man returned, but he was now being controlled by Ted DiBiase. The Undertaker's original manager, Paul Bearer, claimed DiBiase's phenom was an imposter. This set the stage for the return of the real Undertaker at the 1994 SummerSlam, where the dead man came face to face with himself. Fans started off excited to see the real Undertaker return, but they quickly got bored of the match. Bro, listen to that, man. <laughs> and then sometimes you can get these dead reactions just by bad booking decisions and heel turns or face turns that don't really work or matches that's just not not working. For example, if you guys watched Star Crown Jewel a uh, live stream reaction. There were certain matches at Crown Jewel they the crowd was electric for. And then there was matches they didn't give a... No Fs were given. <laughs> they didn't give a fuck what was happening in the ring. A prime example of that was uh, the Rey Mysterio and Logan Paul ring a match. That was a good match. It could have been better, but it was dead majority of the match. The Fatal 5-Way uh, women's match. That was dead majority of the match. Hell, EO versus Bianca. They were that they were they were dead. The crowd just did not care. Even with Kyrie Saint coming back, they were dead for the majority of the match. So sometimes it just depends on the crowd too, man. They they either they care about it or they don't. Vince McMahon was doing commentary and realized the fans weren't into the match and tried to present it as a good thing. You tell me if it worked. This capacity crowd in awe. In awe. I don't know what quite to think. They, they're seeing two Undertakers. This wasn't the only time fans sat on their hands for The Undertaker. At WrestleMania 15, The Undertaker fought Big Boss. Oh, uh, yeah. Match. Their match wasn't that great uh -uh. due to a number of factors, and the ending only made it worse. Yeah. After defeating Boss Man, the brew lowered from the ceiling and gave The Undertaker a rope that he put around Big Boss Man. Now listen to this clip and tell me what's missing. The boss, King the Boss Man, being hung from the cell! The yeah. Boss Man! 
We got commentary and The Undertaker's entrance music, but there's no crowd reaction. Yeah. If you couldn't see the fans, you would say this happened in an empty arena. Now, what could be worse they than this? They barely cared. be silent for an entire match. Before I share this reaction, what happened, or rather what didn't happen, really wasn't the wrestler's fault. Backlash 2017 uh. is probably best known for being the show where Jinder Mahal won the WWE Championship. Here's a question though. What match happened before that? If you said Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan, you are correct. This match received little to no hype in the weeks before the show. To make matters worse, it was sandwiched between two big championship matches. So when that's the case, it's not surprising that this is what happened. Honestly. Listen to the silence. Rest in peace. Uh, well, you went by Luke Harper in WWE. Rest in peace. Oh, and, oh, and a big power slam dumping Harper. Even though the crowd was absolutely dead, WWE still did not stop the show. There is one time they did, and you'll be seeing that very soon. Oh, Throughout man. 2010 and 2011, one of the biggest mysteries in WWE was who was the anonymous Raw General Manager. Whoever this person so was, annoying. they would communicate via messages sent to a laptop. Man, this general manager was working from home before it was cool. Anyways, the anonymous GM disappeared before the mystery was solved. But in 2012, the remote general manager returned for one night. Santino Morella made it his mission to find out who it was, and he got an answer. At the end of the show, Santino checked under the ring where he discovered Hornswoggle. Yeah, the I crowd think... was not amazed. Yeah. Hornswoggle? Are you telling me you're the one that's been causing all of this misery? <laughs> Remember that they were trying to figure out who was the anonymous GM and the best thing they could have come up with was Hornswoggle. Evolution is a mystery and one of the greatest factions in WWE history. For the sure. group consisted of four of the biggest stars in wrestling. So when Evolution returned after being broken up for nine years, you would think they'd get a massive reaction, even just based on the fact that all of them were superstars individually. But you would be wrong. Yeah, that's crazy. I guess the crowd weren't ruthless aggression fans. These fans were actually pretty lucky. WWE could have publicly shamed them for being a bad crowd. And yes, WWE has been petty enough to do that. On the road to WrestleMania, WWE made a stop in Lafayette, Louisiana for Monday Night Raw. They ended up regretting that decision. On that night, several wrestlers got the call up from NXT, but the fans in attendance uh, did not care. I think I remember this, yeah. Yeah. And this is why it's important to, it depends on where you're at, man. Because if, if the fans don't watch or more, you know, I guess you can say they don't watch NXT or they're not the hardcore fans at, at the whatever arena you go to, you get responses and reactions like, the fuck is this? What, who is this person? Who, why am I supposed to care? So they'll just be sitting there looking at these people that us at home, we're like, oh, that's cool. They're on Monday Night Raw. Everybody else like, who are these people? WWE was so irate about this that they actually made an entire video about how bad the crowd was. As a member of the WWE Universe for a long time, I was disappointed in Lafayette. While WWE called out the Lafayette crowd, there was one city that was so bad that WWE actually stopped the show to tell them to get more excited. In late 2014, WWE was doing an episode of SmackDown from Liverpool, England. For whatever what? reason, the Liverpool fans were just not that loud. Really? That's surprising. What? Bigger is one under these conditions. Backslide here on Kid. Shoulders down. Another kick out. Cesaro looking to take the advantage here. Vince McMahon then decided to stop the show and scold the audience personally. Uh, no matter what these people sitting on your hands out here, you're not having a good time. You're not cheering. You're not booing. And why? Come on, have some fun here tonight, damn it! Now, even Vince McMahon. <laughs> Bro, and that's crazy because it seems like in the UK, boys be going crazy. Like, that reaction is just, you can literally do a fucking poke to the eye and just people just start going crazy. So, the fact that Vince had to come out there, <laughs> that's funny, bro. I would have to say, the Liverpool fans didn't do anything disrespectful. Some fans have, though, and to see what wrestlers did to them. Wow, man. That's funny. I wouldn't have never guessed that 
that's the situation he was talking about. I mean, they were quiet for that match, but it seemed like maybe they were quiet throughout the show because that's the segment he probably came on, you know, came from uh, behind in a gorilla position during a commercial break. Like, hey, man, get y'all live in it, though. Like, what the fuck y'all doing, bro? Like, damn, that's crazy. So it, it's a combination of things. It's a combination of booking. It's a combination of where you have the show at because that matters. You can go to a city that don't give a damn full of nothing but super casual wrestling fans and that can hurt the overall view of the the product for us at home it looks like what was what they're seeing is not important so why the hell should we be watching it it kind of slows down the pace of the show if the crowds are not into it so comment down below let me know some other instances if you guys were at a show where the crowd just didn't care they were dead or if you've seen it on television where the crowds was just, they they didn't care. Like I said, for Crown Jewel, there were some parts of the show that they were electric for, and then there was plenty of other parts of the show where the match, in my opinion, was fine and pretty good, actually, but the fans, you know, the people there at that particular moment, they didn't give a damn what was happening in the ring. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel Road to 150k and I'm still getting speedy YouTube wrestling champion world. Appreciate y'all keeping with me. See you on the next one. Peace.